Okay, so in our last video, we introduced um, the Finance Solver application of your CAS for analysing reducing balance loans. And in this video, I just want to work through an additional example where we look at a loan with changing conditions. Okay, so um, the example is that three years ago, Jack and Jill took out a home loan of $420,000 at an interest rate of 4.75% per annum. They have been making monthly repayments of $2,394.50 since then. After how many months, so part A, after how many months, correct to the nearest month, can Jack and Jill expect to fully repay the loan? Okay, so um, we want to know in how long is it going to take after how many months, okay? Our interest rate is 4.75. Our, um, our present or, or principal value is 420000 Now, they took out a loan, so that's positive money. It came from the bank to them. Um, they've been making repayments, that's negative, so they're paying that money to the bank, so 2394.50, and the future value, we want to know how many months will it take for them to fully repay the loan, so we want the future value to be zero, okay, and we also know that it's monthly repayments, so payments per year and, sorry, compounds per year is 12. Okay, so finance solver, menu 8.1. Okay, so as I said, when you open it, it'll always still have the last um, data that you put in there. Um, that's fine, you just edit it. So I can delete in. Um, my interest rate is 4.75. My principal value is 420,000. Uh, my payment is minus 2394.5. And the future value I want to be zero. Payments per year and compounds per year are 12. Okay, so scrolling back around, we're going to press enter on the N value and correct to the nearest month, that's going to be 300 months. Okay, so therefore it's going to take 300 months, correct to the nearest month. Part B, what is the current value of Jack and Jill's loan? Okay, so they've been doing, they took out this loan three years ago, so they've been doing this for three years, okay, so that's 36 months. So we want to work out what is the future value? So this time, compared to last time, n is going to change to 36, and the future value is now what we don't know. Everything else is going to stay as it was in part B. Oh, sorry, part A. Okay, so I'm going to change n to 36 and work out what that means for the future value. Okay, and so the future value is negative 391737.94, and so therefore. Um, uh, Jack and Jill still owe uh, 391,737 dollars and 94 cents. So that's the current value of their loan. Okay, so at this point, Jack and Jill have just been informed that their interest rate is rising to 5.15%. Okay, so the interest rate is going up from 4.75% over the, that they've paid over the first three years to 5.15%. Okay, part C, if Jack and Jill continue to make monthly repayments of $2,394.50, find how many extra months it will take for them to repay their loan. Okay, so what changes here? So we now want to know, again, it's find how many months, so N's going to be the unknown quantity. Our interest rate has now changed to 5.15%. Our present or principal value, now it's almost like thinking we're starting a new loan. This value here, that's how much the loan is worth after three years. At this point, we're changing the interest rate. So this value is now um, the pr principal value of what is essentially a new loan. Okay. Uh, and again, that's borrowed money. So that is money that the bank has paid to us that we then still need to pay back to the bank. So that is positive in terms of the um, finance solver. Okay, payment, they're going to continue to make the same payments. So payment will be negative 2394.5. And we want to know um, how many months it will take for them to pay it off under these conditions. So we want the future value to be zero. Again, payments per year and compounds per year are still going to be 12 because everything's monthly. Okay, so let's work out what N is. So what I'm going to do, because I want that future value to become the present value, and the other thing is, is that um, you can round this value, and it probably won't make much difference here looking at those um, digits, but I wouldn't actually round off 
um, that value to 94 cents because actually in practice it's not like you're withdrawing the money and putting it back in at that point it's still just a balance that's sitting in a spreadsheet okay so essentially it is still going to be this nice exact value so we'll have a look at the difference it makes um, but I'm going to keep it the same so I'm going to press Control C to copy that number from future value and then I'm going to tab around to the present value and I'm going to press Control V to paste that amount there now the only thing I'm going to need to be careful about, I'm not going to round it, but I am going to need to change the negative to a positive because as a present value or principal value, it's a positive amount. That's money that I'm, I've borrowed from the bank. Um, payment stays the same. Future value now becomes zero. Um, interest rate changes to 5.15 and in is what we want to work out. Okay, so we find um, that in is equal to 280 now hang on that's taking less time what have I entered that's wrong 2394.5 ah no sorry that's not less time because um, that doesn't factor in that's that is the number of months that remain after the 36 initial months so this is to the nearest month this is 280 sorry 283 months Okay, so the total time here, so the time to repay is going to be the original 36 months that we've already paid off, okay, plus the 283 months, okay. Uh, so what's that, 289, I think that's 309. We can press escape and, and work that out in our calculator. 36 plus 283 is, uh, sorry, 319. Okay, so it's 319 months in total, so therefore it's going to take, it was 300 months originally, so it's going to take 19 extra months. Okay, so it's a bit over a year and a half extra to repay the loan if we stick with the um, original repayment, even though the interest rate has risen. Um, and obviously extending that, that bit longer means that ultimately not only is the interest rate higher, but we're we're spreading it out over a longer period of time, so we're actually going to end up paying more interest. Okay, part D, if Jack and Jill still wish to have their loan fully repaid after 25 years. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at that original. So the 300 months, oh, sorry. Uh, 300 months was 25 years, okay? So the original plan, if they'd stayed on 4.75% um, interest the whole time, the loan would have been paid off in 25 years. If Jack and Jill still wish to have their loan fully repaid after 25 years, find the new monthly repayments correct to the nearest cent. Okay, so now what we want is N is going to be, and this is where you need to be careful, so N is not going to be 300 because we've already paid off 36 months. N is going to be 300 minus 36, so N is going to be 264. It means that when we shift, we've already spent 36 months, when we shift to this loan, if we still want to pay it off in 300 months, we have to pay off this second part of the mortgage in 264 months. Okay, so be careful about that. Let me just get my finance solver open again. Okay, so we want to now, um, on this new interest rate, fully repay within 264 months, which will give us a total of 300 months on the loan, so 25 years. Um, my principal value is still what I used in the previous uh, question, so my interest rate is still 5.15. My principal value or present value is still $391,737.94. The payment is now what we want to work out. If we want to still repay in a total of 300 months, what does the new payment need to be? And again, we should be expecting we're going to need to repay more than $2,394.50 every month if we want to fully repay in a slightly shorter time. Okay. Um, so we want to cut off these 19 extra months that we worked out in the previous question. We want to fully repay, so again we want future value to be zero and payments per year and compounds per year aren't changing, they are still 12. Okay, so payments unknown, payments what we want to work out, everything else we have correct in the finance solver, so pressing enter here gives us negative 2482.76 and so therefore the new payment, the new monthly payment is going to need to be $2,482.76. So if they still want to pay it off in a total of 25 years, 
um, when the interest rate rises to 5.15%, they will need to increase their payments um, to $2,482.76. Okay, exercise 9C, questions 7, 8 and 9. Um, so finishing off that exercise um, with using the finance solver, but now some problems with changing conditions along the way.